There are four current FDA-approved exon-skipping medicines for Duchenne muscular dystrophy, and those are mutation-specific, and they apply to about 30% of DMD patients. And while there's evidence that they slow disease progression and, in general, they have a favorable safety profile, overall their efficacy is limited um, and they are not effectively delivered to the muscle. So one of the things that was presented at the conference was that um, there are next-generation exon-skipping medications that are under development to hopefully improve the exon-skipping and increase dystrophin expression. Um, And those medications are called PPMOs. And they entail the use of uh, an extra peptide, a cell-penetrating peptide, to enhance the delivery of those therapies to the skeletal and cardiac tissue. And then the big talk of the conference was that there are AAV vector-based gene transfer therapies in various stages of development for Duchenne. AAVs right now are the preferred uh, vector for gene transfer therapy because they're non-pathogenic. They have good tropism to the heart and skeletal muscle, which is where where we want them to go in Duchenne. And they have high transduction efficiency with IV delivery. Um, programs in clinical trials currently include a Sarepta, Pfizer, and Solid, and uh, Sarepta's product in particular has an in- anticipated FDA response date by May 29th. Trial 101 with this product has data as far as four years out showing continued efficacy at that time point, which is really exciting in Duchenne. And then cohort one of the 103 trial, which was a cohort of four to seven-year-olds, showed a pretty significant increase from baseline in dystrophin expression, um, as well as uh, increase in baseline, uh, increase from baseline in percent dystrophin positive fibers. So overall, pretty exciting stuff coming in Duchenne. In considering clinical trial outcomes, um, this is this is a little bit of a difficult topic. So uh, we did have a number of discussions on looking at populations of patients and trying to compare patient populations as well as treatments. And this is, this is very challenging. So um, Dr. Craig McDonald from Davis gave a very nice presentation on the heterogeneity of the patients that we are now looking at with dystrophinopathy. So we have a population of patients that are being treated with a variety of different agents, including just maybe no steroids, maybe steroids, maybe exon skipping meds that have been commercially approved. And now we're going to layer on gene transfer therapy. So how do we really look at the results of these trials to try to determine um, outcomes? And uh, so there was some very nice discussion in terms of looking at short-term trials and maybe using some statistical analyses like a propensity changes to be able to look at outcomes that may be valid for short-term trials, and then really looking at some modeling, population modeling, to look at longer-term trials so that we could try to really have some nice comparisons. Because right now, it is a little bit confusing. It's wonderful that the field is filled with lots of novel therapies, but doing head-to-head comparisons ends up being quite, quite challenging. Uh, Linda Lowe's, who's an amazing physical therapist who's done quite a bit in terms of looking at outcomes, um, really had very practical information, which was almost anybody can look at outcomes in their own population. And all you need to do is decide what is it that you want to look at, how are you going to look at it, collect the information, and put it on a flow sheet. And so our patients are seen relatively frequently, and over time, we are then able to con- to uh, collect real-world world data uh, that will ultimately be very helpful in looking at specific patient populations. So uh, I think the, the clinical trials are really quite interesting. Mm-hmm.